magic is one of these traditions it's a very important part of our culture and it has often been written out of ordinary histories. People come out of here having learnt something and having enjoyed themselves. Power of wind have I over thee. Power of flame have I over thee. Power of wave have I over thee. Power of earth have I over thee. It was started by a, a, an interesting character called Cecil Williamson. Um, ran in the Isle of Man for several years uh, along with uh, another chap who later became quite well known, a chap called Gerald Gardner. And then in 1960 he came here to Boss Castle. And, um, We've been here ever since. Witchcraft isn't Satanism, it's not devil worship. This connection between folklore and witchcraft, you know, witchcraft doesn't isn't all robes and dancing in the moonlight, it's everyday stuff that people have done for hundreds and hundreds of years. Give you uh, a medicine made out of herbs, but also tell you to throw herbs onto the fire. Nettle out, dock in, dock remove the nettle sting. Return, 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 return. The earth, the air, the fire, the water, return, return. return. There is an inherent magic in ordinary natural objects. The open door. Spells alive. By knot of six, the spell in a windy day and tie three knots in a cord, knots of wind into the cord, and then sell the rope to sailors. Um, and then, when they needed a fair wind, they would untie one of the knots. By knot of nine, the thing is mine. a lot of poetry and imagery, um, even when you're using natural objects. It's the way that you kind of connect the spiritual and the artistic. Crystals in general, like this wonderful crystal of Osman Spares. Dark mirrors, um, we've got a lovely dark mirror of Cecil Williamson's downstairs. Mirrors that are not fully reflective. Um, and they were aids, they're tools to help you enter into um, a state of mind where you're open to, to the spirits, the demons. It, it is the most talked about item in the museum. This is what most people think of when they think of witchcraft, of course, is dolls with pins in. Involving um, putting parts, fingernails, hair cuttings, and that in of the person to be cursed in the pocket. Got the names and addresses of people written on them. I shall go into a hair with sorrow and sign and make all care. They're some of the most magical items in the museum and I think they, they ooze um, magic. Because if you heard the mandrake scream, you'd die. We invoke the Queen of Queens, Arada, Arada. It's a great place for a modern witch to come and learn not only what went on in the distant past, but in the relatively uh, close past as well. Grant us peace and grant us love. Lead thy children here below.
an awful lot of people come to see Crowley's Chalice. A man that had a huge influence on an awful lot of people. And you, you couldn't call it witchcraft, but the museum is wider than witchcraft. This is, this is magic. me of his collection in Holland and we ended up going over to see it and um, later when he died the collection was left to us um, and it's this fantastic collection of magical artifacts of which we know very little. Magic is constantly changing and yet at the same time it actually has roots which go back a very long way. But we don't know. As with a lot of the stuff in this museum, I think one of the lovely things about magic is we don't understand it, certainly don't fully understand it, and we don't know why um, certain emblems, certain symbols are used, they just are, and we just have to accept that these things are magical.